Our cover story tonight is from Jerusalem. The city is hosting Israel's largest ever political gathering. More than 45 heads of state and world leaders are in Jerusalem. This is for the upcoming 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, the death camp where more than 1 million Jews were murdered by Nazis during World War II. As the world remembers the gruesome Holocaust, Israel is hosting its largest ever diplomatic event. They're calling it the World Holocaust Forum and it's happening tonight. Kings, presidents, premiers and dignitaries have flown in to attend. Large parts of Jerusalem and Israel have been shut down. One of the main highways of Israel was closed down to open up a route for official convoys to ferry leaders. There is a no-fly zone over the main venues. 10,000 police officers are on duty in the city. India too has expressed solidarity. The Indian mission in Israel sent out a tweet sharing a picture of Maharaja Jam Sahib of Nawanagar. He had saved the lives of 640 Polish children and women. When Germany had invaded Poland, they had escaped on a ship and made their way to India. When the British refused entry to them, this king, Maharaja Jam Sahib, ordered the ship to dock at the Rossi port in his province. Back in Jerusalem, world leaders spoke in solidarity, but where there are politicians, there's bound to be politics. Vladimir Putin of Russia and Mike Pence of the U.S. landed around the same time. Both are holding separate meetings with the Israeli leadership. Poland's president has boycotted the event. Israel is using this as an opportunity to raise the issue of anti-Semitism. According to one survey, one in four Europeans harbor anti-Jew sentiments even today. There are growing instances of anti-Semitism the world over and Israel wants a global plan of action to protect the Jews. Israeli Prime Minister the Benjamin Jewish Netanyahu people. used this opportunity to take an aim at Iran. He called Tehran the most anti-Semitic regime on the planet. I'm concerned that we have yet to see a unified and resolute stance against the most anti-Semitic regime on the planet a regime that openly seeks to develop nuclear weapons and annihilate the one and only Jewish state. Israel salutes President Trump and Vice President Pence for confronting the tyrants of Tehran. Israel is also trying to protect its political interests because some of the guests are following their own agenda. Russian President Vladimir Putin, French President Emmanuel Macron and Prince Charles of Britain have made plans to meet Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. In fact, Macron paid a visit to the old city of Jerusalem and triggered a controversy. The French president was filmed by a journalist while he was shouting at an Israeli security officer. We have that clip. Take a look. Perfectly. Everybody knows the rules. I don't like what you did in front of me. Go outside. outside. I'm sorry, but we know the rules. Nobody, nobody has to provoke, nobody, okay? We keep calm. We had a wonderful work. You did a great job in the city. I do appreciate guys. Please respect the rules as they are for centuries. They will not change with me. I can tell you, okay? So everybody respects the rules. Please. That's a very angry Emmanuel Macron. What happened there and why did Macron lose his school? Well, the French president was at the Church of St. Anne's. This church is owned by the, the French government, his government. It was gifted by the Ottomans to Napoleon III way back in 1856. The church is still considered as French territory and Israeli police did not have an invite to go inside. In fact, one report claims that the Israeli personnel pushed past the French security detail. They were the first to enter the church and that's something that President Macron did not like. By the way, Macron is not the first French president to find himself in a situation like this. Jacques Chirac had a similar altercation back in 1996. Well, this is all on the sidelines, though. The spotlight right now is on Israel. This event at the Yad Vashem Memorial in Jerusalem is being seen as a moment of rare international consensus, especially on the issue of anti-Semitism. Here are some reactions from world leaders. 
несем все ответственность за то, чтобы никогда не повторились страшные трагедии прошедшей войны, чтобы будущие поколения помни, помнили об ужасе Холокоста и о лагерях смерти. Il y a l'histoire avec ses preuves et il y a la vie de nos nations. Ne les confondons pas au risque de collectivement replonger dans le malheur. Nul n'a le droit de convoquer ces morts pour justifier quelques divisions ou quelques haines contemporaines. 